Let's create collage fodder out of vellum. Really grungy, really vintage with a lot of texture and mediums that we have laying around on our desk. Sounds like an experiment. Sounds a little bit messy. <laughs> I guess you're right. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art and welcome to a little experimental tutorial. <laughs> As you can guess, this is the second round that I'm filming. My fingers are already a little bit uh, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I've already filmed the German video. <laughs> And this is the second one that I have to do for you as my English speaking community. If you want to avoid that your fingers look like this, please wear some gloves. I don't care about that. I have the feeling that sometimes I have to look exactly like this to be satisfied with my art. <laughs> But if you don't want that, then please protect your fingers. Perhaps you are new to junk journaling, new to collages and that stuff, and you're wondering, What does this word collage fodder mean? That is really simple. Collage fodder is like food for your collage. So that is basically everything that you can glue down to create a collage. That can be paper, different kinds of paper with different textures, for example, different patterns or different mediums on the paper. Or that can, of course, also be something like fabric or lace or totally different materials than paper. I would like to use some vellum for today's project because I like that vellum is translucent and I think you can do very, very interesting things in collages with such a type of paper. I guess this technique that I'm showing you today will work with nearly any kind of translucent or even transparent paper. So if you don't have vellum, then please check what you have and try to use that. And I would like to show you different variations of my idea today. For that, I'm going to start with two sheets of this. And I would like to <clears throat> stamp to those sheets first. For that, I'm going to use some Archival Ink Black Suit. This is waterproof, so if you want to do this thing here at home, please check that your ink is waterproof, because we will put some liquid mediums later on, on top of the stamping. Um, and of course, we want to make sure that nothing smears around and the ink stays where it is. I'm taking an acrylic block to help me with the stamping. And the first thing that I do is I will stamp really randomly here to my paper. And I would like to show you also different results that you can get with one and the same stamp and one and the same ink. So I will do this stamping a little bit kind of, you know, <laughs> chaotic. And I don't want to have my stamping all the same on all of the papers because later on when I use my collage fodder, I will tear it up, use only a little portion of the paper and so on. So that means um, I want to have the most possible variety on my paper, even with those first steps that are like a preparation before you know, the messy part begins. <laughs> so I'm using the same uh, stamp again with the rest of the ink and I'm just stamping it here to the middle of those papers so that I have one half butterfly here and the other one here and you can immediately see the difference of the stamping. I really like that. And that gives you, of course, many possibilities um, when you use this material later for your collage because um, sometimes you need a really like contrasted image is that a word an, an image that has much contrast to the background or sometimes you need something like this that is visible but really you know really extremely backgroundish holy moly i don't know if that is a word 
<laughs> so I'm using the several generations of this stamp to get um, really much out of this. <clears throat> and of course you could do this also with other colors of ink. You could also stamp with a brown ink or a gray ink if you want to have it more like really vintage but of course you could also um, do this really colorful and use really you know bam colors <laughs> and i'm just thinking if i perhaps want to try out what i just said and stamp with a brown ink as well um but let's try to use brown as well i want to know what happens if we use some brown especially how well we will see that later i have um made this with only black for the german video and now of course i have some things in my hand i have some experiments uh, experience with this technique who and now i perhaps want to go a little bit more crazy and <laughs> try different things good for you perhaps if you see that and you think oh no i don't want to do that then you've learned what you don't want to do <laughs> so this is what it looks now and of course you could use it as it is now I think this turned out really beautiful. I really like the yeah, the variation with the black and the brown. You could use it like it is, but I would like to go a step further. But for that, we have to let this dry completely. So now I want to prepare two other sheets here and I'm just uh, crumbling them up. And then I'm carefully opening this up again. And now you can see, ooh, you can see my fingers are a little bit dirty and now the paper's dirty as well. That doesn't matter. <laughs> you can see with the crumbling, it gets those white marks here. And that's exactly what I want to have, even if this paper will change a lot in a second. So I'm doing this. As often as I think that it looks good. That's a little bit like per personal preference, of course. <clears throat> that looks already really good. So let's do another one. So then we have those. We can put them aside for a while. Because I want to try something else. And for that, I'm going to need my Big Shot machine. Because I want to run those papers through an embossing folder. I have this one here. This is a 3D embossing folder. The number is 665753 by Zizix and Tim Holtz if you want to check that out. So I want to take this one first. I guess my paper is a little bit too big, but that doesn't matter. We just can tear that in half. Then we have this cool paper and as you can see um, it turns white in some spots as well like with the crumbling and I want to know what happens when we have this and add the other mediums later so yeah you know it's like an experiment. <laughs> and then I'm really excited about this one here. <laughs> this is new it just came with the postman. This is also a 3D Embossing folder by Tim Holtz and Zizix. The number is 666156. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so the paper ripped a little bit here and there. That's relatively normal if you don't spray that paper with water. I haven't uh, sprayed my paper with water because the vellum is like getting crumbly when you put water on it but I will try it with water as well um, just to see what 
we get then. So just a little bit of water to both sides of the paper. And I guess you have to be really fast to put that in so that it's easier. Whew. Let's see if that works better without tearing. Oh, I think so. Yep, that worked. That worked totally fine. So just spritz it with some water and it will not tear. That's really cool. And then, last but not least, I bought this one. This is a multi-level embossing folder, also by Zizix and Tim Holtz. The number is 666292. It has these cool dots. Here we, ooh, here we go. Oh my goodness. That looks awesome. That looks really, really awesome. Holy moly, look at that. Ah! Okay, I can't scream so loud. <laughs> now, let's start with the mess. <laughs> so I would like to put some wet mediums on top of my papers now. So let's start. <clears throat> with both of these and with this video I would like to um, show you different variations of one and the same idea yeah so you will see now the crumbled paper without stamping in the next step you will see the paper with the stamping and in the end you will see this yeah so that you can decide which effect you like the best and which one you would like to try out. Perhaps you like everything and you want to make yourself a whole bunch of those papers. That's fine as well, of course. Um, but sometimes it's good to compare things directly to each other. I I'm spritzing some water uh, while I'm explaining what I'm thinking. Sometimes it's good to um, compare different kinds of papers, different techniques with the same mediums to decide which one you like better and uh, when I say compare that I mean compare it at the same session um, when you do this today the other thing tomorrow the next thing in a week then you perhaps can't remember what you've exact exactly done and which one was the easiest um, that one that you've liked the best and so on if you do that directly after each other then it's way easier I think so here <clears throat> we have this and now I am going to spritz some vintage photo distress spray stain. Alternatively, you could use watercolor, um, acrylic paint that you've watered down or coffee. That also would be a possibility um, if you want to have it not so vintage like I'm creating it here today, then please use some other colors you could also do this in red or green or blue or whatever and I'm trying to get this to both sides of the paper because sometimes the back side of collage fodder looks more interesting than the front <laughs> and after I have massaged this in a little bit I'm taking this and you can see this now goes really really easily I'm crumbling it up again and I can make a really small ball out of this paper, meaning <clears throat> those areas get way more detailed than when you do this in dry condition. But it also gets differently uh, with both steps. So I've made the experience that when you look really close, you can see... A variation in the color of those little areas here that are darker now um, and when you crumble it only when it's wet you, do, you um, don't get this variation so that's the reason why I'm crumbling it twice uh, one time in the beginning and then again now <coughs> and then you can of course lift up <coughs> oh I'm so sorry lift up the rest of the ink here you could spritz more now if you want, but I guess I like this color already. This is really nice. So I'm going to let that dry. 
and I will do the same thing here with this one and <laughs> even if I did the same thing they look really a little bit different don't they <laughs> so um, I want to show you the difference um, if you leave this like it is and let it dry or if you now add more ink and I'm trying to press this thing not so hard so that it gets out a little bit like splatters and now I will not touch this anymore but I will let that dry as it is let's take this one with the stamping this is flat I haven't done anything to it and the other one I want to crumble up as well to show you the difference between not crumbled and crumbled and stamped. I'm going to add some water first, like with the other one as well. Okay. So I will try to get some of that to the back as well. And we can also crumble this one up again to see what will happen with that and then we can let this dry as well now let's go on with the embossed pieces so let's start perhaps with this one mm. I think it will make absolutely no sense to crumble one of them up because we will perhaps then lose the pattern. But I think if we don't do it, we will never know what will happen. So I will, uh, what what uh, do I want to do? I want <laughs> to have some ink here. And I also don't know what will happen when this gets really wet, if it, if this embossing will be flat in the end again or if it will stay there i have absolutely no idea because normally i stain my papers and then i run it through the machine and not this way around but why not try new things perhaps not too much pressure and then we will let this dry okay looks really weird um, for this one, I want to try to crumble it up. Let's see what happens. Because with vellum, it's really strange, actually. Um, if you have... Ooh, oh! If you have ever used vellum in your life... <laughs> Uh, one of those days where you see me relatively speechless. If you've ever used vellum in your life and you um, have made that wet and touched it with your fingers or crumbled it up, then um, you have realized that this is really smooth now. It's like normal wet paper. Uh, when the vellum is dry, I mean, this is like you know, like, like a wet napkin or something, when this is dry, it's really like, like it's, it feels sometimes a little bit like plastic, yeah? Um, and that is really crazy because when this dries, it gets this original feeling back. And now I'm more than excited how this will turn out. I mean, um, this is of course not the impression that Zizix and Tim Holtz have thought about when they made the folder, yeah? We have changed it a lot. I know that. You can't really see anymore that this was this special embossing folder. But that is, this looks absolutely amazing. I really, really love that. So I will put this aside to dry as well. Here we go. So shall we do that here as well? I think we will do it. We will do it exactly the same way. We will spritz water here and here. Then some of the ink. Oh. <laughs> I'm 
And then we will give this a little massage. And I will put this aside to dry as it is. And with this one, we will do it with the like with the other one. We will crumble this up. And I think here is not so much ink like on the other one. But we will see. Ooh, that was perhaps a little bit too much. Oh no. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so that was definitely too much. Oh no. <laughs> so now we have this. But it looks not so bad. I mean, those tiny pieces here could give a really great texture. Why not? So we are going to let that dry. <clears throat> and then here's the last one with those numbers. I have absolutely no idea if we can see the numbers in the end, but this could also be, become a really interesting piece for a background. We will see. Okay, so here I'm back. Everything is dry now. So this one is the one that had no stamping, as you can see, and that was just crumbled. I really like this effect. This looks like a really cool alternative to faux leather made from baking paper. Perhaps you know this technique, taking baking paper and some mediums, also crumbling that up, and then you have like this faux leather effect. But I like this better, um, especially for colors that are not brown. Because baking paper, I mean baking paper that I can get here, is nearly always brown. And then you always have this brown like undertone when you use, for example, blue or green or whatever you like. And with this vellum paper, you can control the colors of your faux leather way better. So I really like that. And this feels also better than faux leather made out of baking paper, I have to say. It's like, can you hear this sound? It's not like paper anymore. And with baking paper, when that is dry, it's always like this really loud and papery sound, but not leathery. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. This one is also really interesting. Um, that was the one where I have made the same thing like here, but then spritzed some more ink and then uh, I didn't touch it, but let it dry as it was. And I really like those dark areas. It looks like a little bit like burnt with fire or something. Really, really interesting. Let's go on with both of these. Um, the stamping is really strange here because when you look at this when it lays on my table you think where's the stamping it's gone or something when you lift that up and a little bit of light comes through the paper or you have a really light background behind the paper meaning a light background for your collage then you can see the stamping way better than when it lays on a relatively dark surface like my table here here you can see it probably a little bit better. When I lift it up, then you can suddenly see the butterfly again. Mm, the black ink worked way better than the brown ink. And I really, really like this color. Oh. <laughs> but the more surprising results we got with the embossing folders. So let's start with the mosaic. This is, I would say, nice, not so spectacular. This is like seagrass. It feels like a really, really weird plant from the sea. It doesn't feel like paper anymore. And then we have this. 
this is the one that we have crumbled up as you can see we have lots of damages here but it's so sturdy because um, when this dries the paper gets nearly like it was in the beginning yeah it gets like hard like this a vellum sound and it would be absolutely no problem to use this and to tear that up and use that in a collage so let's look at the last one if you don't like drinking tea and you want to have something that has this tea bag look take this for me, when I saw this, when, when it was dry and I went back to my uh, oven where I've dried it and I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, um, if you don't like black tea, especially black tea, then just use this because a tea bag gets this as well. And additionally, you have those cool dots from the embossing folder and that looks so crazy. And... The really crazy thing, what you also can do with this kind of collage fodder is the following. You could take a piece of really hard foam. So as you can see, this is, I can press it. I can, I can like squeeze it, but it's not like I can press it completely. Yeah, It's, it's relatively hard. It has to be... A little bit soft but hard at the same time <laughs> do you know what I mean so this comes from this shaping tool kit from Zizix and Tim Holtz and in that kit there are also these little guys here and for what I'm doing now uh, this is really helpful when the paper is completely dry you can take that and um, then you can just place it here and you can take this tool and carefully go over the paper and you can make it like highlight it with this method that's crazy for me that is really crazy and of course you could uh, go really crazy with this technique you could think okay i don't have a sewing machine i will just go around here and make a faux stitching on those animals this is of course possible as well so let's perhaps take mm, this little guy here and here the stamp gives us a really good orientation where we have to press with this tool because here you can see the light obviously comes from here and we have those lighter areas mainly here and here's the shadow the the body of this animal is really dark here and lighter here and you can of course see that on the stamp itself so i can just go in there where the light areas are <clears throat> then this looks like this and for me this is really interesting and what you also can do and that's so crazy take one of those um bigger dots here from this tool and then with with really like no pressure you go over the paper really close to the stamped image when you have that it looks not so spectacular but now we are going to take the very tiniest uh tool here and we go really close to the stamped image with a little bit more pressure so that we get a really like outline but oh, holy moly how can i explain that i i make an outline here can you see that it's really like the same pressure like here it's the same intensity like with those areas and when i have that i then go with those circles over the area in between of this really light thing and the shadow here so that I get a, like a mid-tone in between of both and that makes this thing here standing out really really well so this is what it looks 
Isn't this just cool? That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Make your own collage fodder. Let me know what you think about it. If you want to share your results to social media, then you can use this hashtag Junk Journal Art mit Luisa Heinzel so that I can see your results. I'm really excited <laughs> what you will come up with. And I hope you will have much fun with this. Have a very creative time. See you the next time. Bye bye.